Chat Sabe, alles klar. What's up, world? This is another Twitter question, and it's going to be the last one for the entirety of November because I have some bigger projects coming up, but more about that at the end of the video. So today is Twitter question number seven, and it is a one that really stretches the definition of what a Twitter question is because we once asked that during a seminar in university. So how many pieces or how many artworks can an artist create during their lifetime? So my guess was around, you know, 1000 pieces, which would mean that we would create, you know, like every other week, one piece and it would work for maybe 40 years. So that would create, you know, like roughly a thousand pieces. But the guesses went as high as 10,000 and as low as 100. So depending on the medium that the people thought about. And we never really finished that discussion. And I really wondered, so like, that is quite an interesting question. Because if you, for instance, want to invest into someone, in an artist, and you kind of want to estimate how many pieces they will create during their lifetime, it would be nice to know, you know, like, what will their probable output be? But also as an artist, you know, like, if you have a catalog that you want to create to think about how many pieces you will probably create during the lifespan depending on the medium that you use. So today I will dig deep into that. If you want to know how many pieces an artist did, you will take their catalog raisonné. So this is, in the ideal case, the definitive scholarly compendia, the exhaustive, complete overview of the entirety of works that the artist did. So this is the standard text that includes an image, which piece is which, with additional details regarding titles, size, format, material, techniques, date and location, duration of the pro production, where it currently is located or who owns the piece, what the price was when sold to whom and many more things. So these pieces of information are crucial for the provenance of an artwork, thus to know where the piece comes from and the history behind it. So a detailed provenance helps artists to keep track about their work, so as in case of a doubt, this will be the essential document for the artist regarding copyright, legal claims, payments and so on. So if you created an artwork and it would not be in your catalog, this would be significantly influence the price of the piece. So imagine you found an original painting by Picasso in your grandparents' cellar. So until it would be verified to be a real Picasso and added to the catalog resume, the price would probably be significantly lower than it, what it could be. Thus, it is quite important that you as artists create one yourselves. And did you also keep track that there exists only one official catalog version and not several, because that makes it really complicated. So the amount of works that you produce does differentiate a lot. So depending on the lifestyle and situation of the artist, it heavily relies on the techniques and the materials that are used. So time is a crucial factor, so both the epoch of the artist lived in, as well as the time that is used one on one piece to finish it. Like, Leonardo da Vinci was a dreadfully slow painter, while Paul Klee was quite the opposite. Um, creating multi-layered oil painting is more time consuming than creating a one-dimensional stencil or pencil sketch. So let us look at a few examples of what some artists did. Claude Monet created 1,983 oil paintings. Frida Kahlo did roughly 200 works. Paul Cézanne made 954. Henri Rousseau, 261. Edward Munch, a whopping 1,789. And René Magritte, 1,094. Paula Modersohn Becker created roughly 734. And Vasily Kandinsky, 1,177 pieces. Jean Miro, 2,078. And Georgia O'Keefe, 821. So the exact number of pieces is quite difficult to determine, especially with older artists because certain pieces get lost, they get mislabeled, um, they get attributed to the wrong people. Um, then you have the happenings like world wars where stuff just gets looted, it gets stolen, it gets taken away or it gets burned like in an iconoclast and that they just take something, they don't render it as good anymore and then burn the pieces. So it makes it hard to have a complete list, especially with older artists. So the catalogue raisonné is therefore a fantastic possibility to create a sort of autobiographical overview along the way when you work. So one artist that did this particularly well was Paul Klee. From February 1911 on until his death in 1940, the artist listed and indexed every single piece of work he ever did. So from the first volume, so the first book he completed, 
He even had someone made a copy just because he was afraid that his own catalog could get lost during the war times. So his own catalog is a fantastic piece because it is quite rare that an artist indexes everything that precisely and profoundly. So according to Clay, there are 733 paintings, 4,877 drawings, 3,197 colored works on paper, 54 etchings, 38 lithographies, 3 woodcuts and 16 sculptures. This amounts to a total of 8,918 pieces. If you are an artist, let me know if you have started your own catalog already and if so, what your process, what are your techniques, your inspiration, how do you do it? I'm quite wondering actually. The amount that I do is pretty secondary. So that is a catalogue raisonné. There is no English word for it, so it's, uh, sorry. To the announcements. So I will not release another Twitter question video in the next month because I'm working on a bit a bigger project. And the one that I want to release in November is on the 25th of November, which is the International Day for Ending Violence Against Women. And I have an artist where that I wrote an essay about and I have to like finish that and the editing will take a bit longer, so I will only do that one in the next month. So stay tuned for her. I already mentioned her in another video. Uh, you will see. I'm looking forward to November. And thanks for watching. Subscribe or don't. Leave a comment and see you around. Bye.